if you came across this video, I want to let you know, first of all, welcome. Okay, my name is AK. If you're a subscriber, you already know this part is not for you. My brother, you got to watch the video before this. This is a part of a series. All right, so make sure you click on top here. All right, or you can find the links in the description to the previous episode or the part. Okay, that being said, uh, 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 welcome. All right, to the house of knowledge, wisdom, revolution. No, I'm sorry, evolution and revolution. A revolution not with violence, but with thought. A revolution of idea thought okay knowledge is power welcome and uh, yeah all right i'll see you later not later i mean we should be doing a video here so i'll see you uh, yeah you are now watching ak debris on youtube welcome back to the house of knowledge wisdom evolution and revolution make sure to click the like button smash the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Get comfortable, grab a bottle of water, and back to you, AK. This is Hannah, AK Debris, London. Now, to think about it, I didn't even cover him escaping. I didn't cover the, the details of the escape, yet what we just covered here today is fascinating in terms of Brett Shadow Crew's founder. Um, what I just said about being uh, smart here, not there, also applies heavily into someone who I think is actually way smarter. And that someone is named Kumba Dani as he was known online. That was his username, all right? He was a moderator, a secondary admin on Shadow Crew. If you was around then, you definitely either spoke to or seen that name around. Kumba Johnny, Kumba Johnny. Kumba's real name is Albert, all right? He's a dude from Cuba, smart dude. Uh, uh, at Techie, see, Al, uh, Brett, okay, the boss, Gollum Fun, he was he was smart in terms of crime, maybe, and the, the, the street kind of aspect of fraud, but he wasn't all the way up there in the tech. So, <clears throat> two mutual friends, or however else, I'm not really too sure, he ends up bringing Albert or Kumbadani on board because he was uh, more technologically advanced. He knew how to code. He knew a lot when it comes to the computer. All right. Uh, he plays with the computer like, uh, what was it? Stevie Wonder plays the piano. All right. His comp the computer is like his instrument. He's just natural with it. Okay. Really smart dude, but equally dumber when it comes to, you know, we're going to see. So, the hacker named Albert Gonzalez Kumbadani, much like Brett, <laughs> he was also enriching himself through fraud right under the Fed's nose. Oh, yes. Now, if you've watched my last video, you would have seen that kind of the whole takedown or the shutdown of Shadow Crew was really initially, I mean, not just him, but it was it was really brought down by him. So he was really the 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 Takashi Six Nine of that Treyway. You know what I'm saying? So let's go back to the end of 2004. Right after he did what he did, he did his little Tekashi run. You know, set up his homeboys to get raided 
on their computers. All right. And, uh, you know, the, the Secret Service afterwards, for uh, fear for his safety, moved him or relocated his, him to his hometown in Miami after the fall of Shadow Crew. But he still continued to work for them. They started to like him. And I don't blame him. He seemed like a funny, likable dude. You know? I wish he was free today so I can watch his interviews. Or maybe when he's, by the time he's free, I might interview him myself. Who knows? So at this point, there's a great deal of trust in their relationship. After all, Albert helped them take down Shadow Crew. I mean, one of, if not the largest fraud site. And his work led to several other arrests. But see, <laughs> Albert then would leverage this trust to his favor and use the resources available to him to research corporate hacks. All right. You know, he's sitting down with the Electronic Crimes Task Force. Like, who else is going to teach you better about uh, corporate hacks than the people whose job is to, you know? So Homeboy's picking up sauce from the feds. Now that he was back in his hometown, you know, the town where he was raised, all right? Albert is kind of in his home, uh, 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 home self, I guess. So he began working with other hackers he knew growing up, all right? Back to the basics. When Albert was a teenager, he was in a hacker little collective, a little, a little gang, all right? A little, little clique, all right? Called the Kiblers. Kibler Elves. Mm, golly, he ain't had no swag. All right. Were they yelling Kibler elves like Takashi uh, was yelling Treyway? Treyway, Kibler elves. Who knows? Kibler elves were responsible for hacking the home page of NASA. All right, these wasn't these wasn't the the, the uh, a couple of randoms. All right, a couple of geeks with computers trying to, uh, you know, like nowadays these wannabe hackers. Yeah, dude, I went to school. I know a little bit about Linux and Metasploit, so now I think I'm a hacker. Ak, you're not a real hacker. Ak, I never said I was. Yeah, but you you're fake, man. You claim to be. Shut up. These were the real deal. All right, these people had something to show for it. They wasn't even trying to get money. I'm talking teenagers just trying to troll and have a laugh with one another. All right, you know how Stifler used to uh, 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 drink beer in crazy ways to make his homie, homies laugh? These guys, their activities was different. I'm talking about imagine you deface the homepage of NASA. NASA's website, yes, space travel NASA. But it didn't stop there. These boys were crazy, okay? I'm talking about just to paint a picture. NASA was just uh, the tip of the iceberg. They shut down or defaced the homepage of the U.S. Storm Prediction Center. Good Lord. Now... It got boring though. You shut down. I mean, look, you shut down NASA. They can't go to space. All right. Now that they go on their website, you just see troll pics. Trying to see when the storm is coming in Miami. Shut it down. Albert and his homies. God damn. But it got boring in the US. So he shut down the website and defaced the website of the Indian government. My brother, why you do this to me? Why are you hacking my website? What I do? What I do to you? I am just a dude. All right? No disrespect. You know I love doing these accents from all over the world. 
Now, you know, and excuse me for what I'm about to say. I'm only saying it in context of his name. Again, this is the early 2000s. Such words, you know, not everything was offensive and castable. It's not like I'm saying the end with the hard E-R. So Albert's second name was Soup N-word. N-word like Hitler. Okay, that N-word. Soup N. And use his talents, all right, to steal or, or obtain CC info, credit cards. And buy, you know what I'm saying, the type of things a teenager would buy, you know, in the early 2000s. You feel me? CDs, all right? Albums, clothes, all right? Video games, PlayStation 1 video games. N64, Golden Eye, he was swipe that. <laughs> okay, PlayStation 2 coming out, swipe that. As an adult, though, not much has changed. Albert and his his, his fellow uh, uh, Kilber brothers, Kilber Kibler elves, all right, Chris Scott, all right, elite elite. I almost said and again, elite dudes. Jonathan James, all right. Names don't sound like it, but they 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 bought that life. These guys had grown up though now, and it was they said there's it was time for money, all right. It wasn't about no CDs and, and and BDs no more. It was about getting some money, so they set their sights on fortunes much larger. So, you know, after the little reunion with the homies, all right, linked up, you know, back in Miami, all right. Island boys, you know, I'm just an island boy with a couple hackers shut down NASA in the prediction center for the storm. And that got boring, so I shut down India.gov. Holy God. <laughs> but hold on, don't get too excited. We just getting started. So the boys put them on. They talk about this new thing, little new method, if you will. Some new sauce, all right? Some 2005 exclusive. A little, a little, ain't even sauce. It's really a, a hacker thing, not a, not a swiper thing. Because these boys were techies, not swipers. Fraud, they're like, uh, uh, they were around in the fraud community. But see, in the scam world, you don't need to be a rocket scientist or, or even technically savvy to pull off fraud or, or a scam, right? But you do need some knowledge to be a hacker. These boys weren't swipers. That's why they were messing up. That's why he messed up as a swiper. Because he's really not a swiper. He's good at hacking. That was his, his, his expertise, all right? Now I was watching, and <laughs> this is this is irrelevant, but also very relevant to this. And it's actually it's really relevant because wow, I was watching this thing on Netflix. Uh, it's a show called How to Sell Drugs Fast, and it's about a German kid Moritz who. Kind of like Shadow Crew or like Silk Road, but it's like a modernized uh, fictional version. Long story short, I don't want to spoil it, but he dodges the feds in the show. And what the federal agent told him was, not many get second chances. Use it wisely. And that stuck with me. You know? That's, that, that little sentence stuck with me because I myself was blessed to get a second chance by God, but I was humble enough and, 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 and grateful enough to realize that this is a blessing. And, and, you know, so I took my second chance and I went hard as I could with music, which eventually led to YouTube. Then it led to this documentary style stuff you watching. 
But see, I guess some people never learn, all right? You know, secret service, hold a little take down a shadow, you know? But I guess maybe maybe it's the maybe it's the Florida water, cause Miami, you know you know the Florida man. We all know about the 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 you know Florida man meme or or whatever that is. You know, cause Kumbadani, he may be a nerd, maybe a hacker, but guess what? He's an island boy. So his, his his old buddies here put him on to a new strategy, a new technique, all right, a new wave maybe, but could be. The name of the method or the strategy is, uh, and that's a stupid name if you ask me, but hey, it's called war driving. No, you're not going to be driving the car in Call of Duty. War driving, basically, you're going to be parking your car or even walking, but, or in some cases, driving near the rentals, retail stores to pick up their Wi Fi networks. You know, they had to use an antenna back then. You maybe grabbed it at Best Buy, Radio Shack. All right, I don't know if they had Amazon, but I guess Amazon was still trying to find books to sell on Amazon that was supposed to sell books. This is early. So Maz had the antenna and he would park, all right, right next to the retail spots, all right? And he opened up the laptop, hooked the antenna up. And then the elves, the Kibler elves, all right, Kibler gang, Kibler way, they would get a list of other available Wi-Fi networks. Once they got that available list, <laughs> it's a matter of time before they got the uh, uh, breaching, all right, breaching into the database, like the song says, breaking in. And you know, this is again, 2005, like the world is not hip to internet and, and, and cyber crime and all this. They thinking they good. And most retailers were horribly equipped to deal with attackers, virtually no form of cybersecurity. All right, the only cybersecurity they had was calling up the internet company or calling up the fans. Those that did mostly used a, uh, a security algorithm, a type of encryption, if you will. I think it's still used to this day. Uh, it's called WEP, which stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy. I think I could be wrong. The current one on current Wi-Fi networks is maybe WEP, WEP2, if I'm not mistaken, or WEP3, or something like that. You know, that's, this, this was the first gen of that. And, you know, 2005 version, you know, obviously it had uh, 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 flaws, all right? Flaws which hackers which would abuse. And uh, uh, uh. Albert's gang here, or group, would take advantage of that, all right? Easily can get into any wireless network security key within minutes that's how that's how weak that web was and they were successful with their attacks on many retailers i'm gonna name you a few office max sports authority as these are these are off brand as, as as heck my dude my brother in Christ. But here, here we go. Here's start to get familiar. Barnes and, Barnes and Noble. All right. Albert, you know, he went back to the swiping days and he started busting down 
uh, 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 ordering blanks or whatever he got them from. He get the blank cards, all right, CC info, dumps, you know, back then they had all the dump info, I guess, on the computers. It wasn't encrypted like it is today and whatnot. It was weak. So he was putting dumps or uh, credit card info, debit card, and encode it on the blank cards with the MSR. And he'd get cashers, just like back in the day with Shadow Crew. You know, Secret Service, ah, forget about them. He ain't learned nothing. He got a cashier with a name like Patrick Star. <clears throat> I mean, Patrick Tui. To pull breach from the ATMs or bread. Going crazy. All right. Now, I want you to pay attention because these are really, <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, I, I got to admit, I don't recommend crime or whatever, but to a degree here, as a smart dude who's into really the same stuff ethically, I am just in awe at this group here because I have a hard time making my friends come together in music or YouTube or to do something productive. I got to say, to a degree, Albert, I know you're in jail. Maybe you have a Wi-Fi network. You watch this. My brother, I'm jealous. I wish I had three smart people for legal stuff like music, YouTube. But damn, like it's so hard to convince three smart people to come. You see what this? Again, I'm I don't I'm not saying what they did was good. I'm just saying three smart people. This is what happens when they link up. They broke world records. Yes, to this day, September twenty fourth. 2022 is when I'm recording this. To this day, no one beat the, the I mean, uh, 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 Albert's record. You can check on Wikipedia. Moving on. I'm still jealous that three, you see, black people, you know, if you haven't figured it out, I'm black. I address black issues a lot. Black people, let me holler at you. Black man. You see, three smart people got together and it got dangerous. Again, I'm not saying it was good, but it got dangerous. Why can't we, you know, why we spend all, all the time hating on each other and tearing each other down? All right, look at these three. You see what could happen with unity? That's why they keep separating you six feet apart, whatever. I'm not getting get into that. This is not what this is, but... All right, let's just keep going. I'm not gonna start rambling. Next documentary. This one, I'm just in the mood for it. Let's move on. So the boys, like we said, you know what I'm saying? They got to doing uh, Office Max, Sports, Bars and Nobles, but it wasn't over. So come July, of 2005, I forgot their name, the elves, something else, the group, these little boys, or not little boys, actually, <laughs> I got to put respect, these elite hacker uh, uh, group here, click, all right, unit, they was out on another war drive, but they said, hey, man. You know who would have a bunch of CCs on that system? Who? Marshals. Ooh. So they broke into this one location and decided to take it a step further and break into a second location, second branch. Mm. Using two access points, Albert is then able to... Uh, map out a network. He's able to map out their network and get the credentials he needed, not only to get into two branches now, but to get access to the parent organization. 
TJX. No, not TJX6. TJX, the company. I think they sell clothes, don't they? So we don't have it in Canada. Anyway, TJX is huge. This theory works. All right, I told you, Albert, as stupid as he is, he's also a, a genius. And this takes him some time. It's not a boom, boom, bow, you know? It's not a bow. What, what Kwando say? Boom, bow. Ba boom. It's not that. It takes a little bit of time. But in May, when comes May 2006, <laughs> Albert is back to his old tricks with the VPN. I'm not talking Express VPN, which, by the way, if you're watching me, I'm never saying your name again until you sponsor me. I need, look at me. I'm, doing, I'm working hard here. So he set up a VPN, which is like uh, not that type of one, like a VPN a private connection, uh, basically from his computer directly into TJX's network. All right. Successful. This leaves, oh God, I don't know how, how he must have felt at the time, but if I was him, all right, I am not a, a, a kitty cat. I, I consider myself brave, but I'm not that brave. Maybe I just got older now. Because this left the group <laughs> with a wealth of credit card information. They hit the Holy Grail. They hit the treasure. They broke the Guinness World Record of scamming. I'm sorry, not scamming. Of hacking. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, these numbers are hard to imagine. It's estimated that upwards of a hundred million numbers were grabbed, stolen. A hundred million numbers? That's like equivalent to 20% or 50% of the entire USA getting their card info leaked. To this day, the biggest uh, CC hack, the biggest uh, number of uh, credit cards, uh, info uh, breach stolen. So... Homeboy just left the Secret Service. And, okay, maybe you're struggling, you're trying to get by, you're doing a little scamming, a little hacking. I get it. But world record-breaking hacks, bruh? A hundred million. A hundred million. You know how much is a hundred million? A thousand is three zeros. A million is six zeros. A hundred million, oh my, that's mind, that is mind-numbing numbers, to say the least. But see, just because you got a hundred mil numbers don't mean they all work, all right? Some people are broke, some of these come back, uh, cancel cards, so tons of these numbers were coming back expired. All right, and Albert needed a way to get fresh info. So he hit up a dude named Steve Watt, like the b bulb, you know, 12 watts. Watt. Now, for those of you that follow me or just know me, real life or YouTube or whatever, even my Instagram, you know, you see my rants. One thing I always say is that knowledge is power. Knowledge, I say it again, knowledge is power. This is not rambling. This is directly relevant to what we're talking about. Now, power, hold on, let me drink water. Now, power is measured by watts, okay, like a light bulb. 
12 watts, whatever. And the smarter, I guess, you are, I mean, hypothetically here, the more power you got, the more watts. Because our boy Albert, okay, most of these cards kept coming back. Yes, you got 100 million cards, but not 100 million going to hit. A lot of them came back expired or, or, or canceled. So Albert needed a way to get fresh info. That's when he turned to the Stephen Watt, who's a, a smarter dude, all right? And he works on developing uh, little programs, like a little developer. So they develop a packet sniffing program called blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. Huh? Once installed on TJX's system, blah, blah, blah could take a car. Actually, it's two blahs. So it's blah, blah. Blah, blah could take a card info after it was swiped in real time. That way, see, they're already in this TJX system. They're already in there. So he put the packet sniffer. That way, instead of running through 100 million random numbers, he would get the, the CC or the card in real time as it's being swiped. That way, you know, hey, this card is alive. And it would then will be encrypted and compressed uh, as a file before being sent directly to Albert. With this little creation here on Albert's hands, he had practically a endless stream of money. Not just a lot of money. It was a lot of money, but it wasn't just a lot of money. It was too much money. Like the song, too much sauce. The type of money that breaks money counters. A notable, a a notable spend that he Albert made that made it to his court documents and a lot of stories about this little story or covering of this story is a one day he spent seventy bands, seventy thousand dollars. On his on a birthday party. All right, he loved his little drugs, so he went on drug benders, blending LSD, shrooms, ecstasy into magic cocktails. Oh my God, that's a horrible mix. That's nightmares. So the the success and desire. To fund this lifestyle made 2007 his biggest year by far in terms of breach activities, money, lifestyle. All right, he turned into he turned into the biggest stunner. All right, what Birdman called himself, biggest stunner, the biggest youngest flexor, <laughs> but even that. Wasn't enough, all right? 70 bands on a party. <laughs> Most people would, hey, you give me 70 bands right now. If I'm doing what you're doing, I'm out the game. I want to drop, you know? What's wrong with people? But see, using the same method from the TJX uh, 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 hack, breach, the elves here, the group, would hack David Buster's again. Actually, no, not again. They would breach, hack uh, Dave and Buster's, May 2007. 7-Eleven, that rhymed. In August. All right. Yes, they did. 7-Eleven, Dave and Buster's. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm not done. Oh, you think I'm... Hold on. Hannaford Brothers, 
November. Wow. Crazy year, huh? Oh, but there's more. What? Yeah, there's more. Heartland Payment Systems. I don't know what Heartland is, but it sounds sketchy. Again, it sounds like something, if I was doing what you do, I would have messed with it. It sounds almost uh, federal, <laughs> government-y. All right? Either way, the Heartland attack, after all these hacks and all this money they made and all these levels they've achieved, you know, I don't know if this was about money or this was about something deeper because until what point was enough enough, right? You already broke a world record. But you still, you're not going, okay, you're still doing it to survive. I get it. Get a little bit. Nah. Because the Heartland attack was at the same scale of TJX, the world record one. Actually, the, the, the TJX was 100 million cards, right? And he broke that record, right? The Guinness world record given to me, not, not Guinness. The world record of biggest breach credit cards, 100 mil, the largest to this day by him. He said, you know what? The only person who can defeat Superman is Superman. So he broke his own record this time. Heartland attack, 130 mil. Oh, Lord, he's Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord have mercy. 130 million. If you're having a hard time imagining this, we said 100 million first, right? This is 100 million <laughs> plus 30 million. All right? So that's like, bro, the, he hacked the whole country? Oh, that. 130 million cards were stolen. But he still, guess what? He All of this going on, right? Albert is not just running in, uh, 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 Albert is not in the hood. Albert is not uh, 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 what you might call a civilian, all right? Albert is not posted up, you know? In the house, in the basement, just doing his thing, keep going. Nah, huh. Albert is not outside in the hood with the essays and the cholos, or even with his white friends, with the hacker friends, going to hacker cons and and and, and watching uh, 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 Pirate Bay, I guess. I, I don't know if they have piracy, but watching movies or doing something nice, bro. You just escaped the biggest uh, bust in the world here, like. What are you doing? Albert is not just chill, you know what I'm saying? This whole thing going on. Meanwhile, like it's happening parallel to him being still employed as a paid informant, a trappy trappy guy by the Secret Service. Yes, all the while this going on. At least he didn't do it in their office like Brett did. <laughs> Either way, him and Brett, and, and, and this is the moral of his story. It's different from Brett is, I said they're smart, and that applies to both, but this one here, it's, it's, it's not even a moral, it's a question. And it answers itself. When is when is it enough? I'm not justifying what anybody did, but let's really ask, like, when is it, when is it, when is enough enough, all right? Now I see why greed is one of the seven deadly sins, because you already, you got enough money to blow 70 bands on a party, but you still trying to break world records, like, whole time you just seen what happened was i mean you were part of the shot you was the first guy to get arrested in shadow crew 
If that's not an eye opener, I don't know what is. Remember what I said earlier? Not many get second chances. All right? The universe or God or whatever you believe in, the source, this higher divine intelligence, it will send you signs sometimes. Not just some fraud. Whatever you're doing wrong, it will give you signs. God gives you chances every day. Do you take those chances? Do you sit back and analyze and, and take the message? Or do you just live in robot mode, NPC? Ask yourself. That's everyone is answers to themselves, not to me. This is between you and you, or you and God. So, I need water. <laughs> 